Brother Neville. The Lord bless you. Uh, it's always kind of hurry. I just got in. Uh, Brother Moore had me on the phone about coming down there for their Pentecostal 50-year jubilee. I was trying to make out dates from the businessman over to the other place. And I said, turn the phone up and say, hear that only believe? You know what that means? And I just turned him over to Billy and run out the door. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know how they'll come out back there. But, <laughs> it's, um, I really love to go down to Louisiana over to those people, them good old Southerners down there. But um, then I got to be in, around that same dates in, in Florida at the original convention of the businessman. And it uh, makes it kind of complicated when you try to tie them together just in a moment like that. Yeah. We're all happy to be here this morning and be alive and, and uh, among those who can say amen. amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry that we're all jammed up in here and said some of the people come up and just drove away. But um, uh, we are, it's just the best we can do at the, at the time. You, know, you understand, I'm sure. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Can you hear better out of this one or out of this one? This one here? Good. Just get it right around here so I'm close. This is alive. That's a, that's a recording. Mike. This recording here. Right. All right, sir. Well, did you enjoy last night? Yeah. I yeah. Yes, sir. Got it. And the Lord bless us. There's just so many more things could be said about the message there, but I thought maybe you could study it, you know, and you realize and between the lines, the hour we're living in. We're right at the end time. And um, I believe that. Of course, every person has thought that, I guess, since Jesus promised to return. But, you know, one of these days, he's going to come. Anyway. Amen. Amen. So, I just don't see nothing left to happen. Only the rapturing of the church. Amen. Now, just before we approach the message, I want this morning on the subject of the countdown. And uh, we uh, and tonight, remember tonight's service now is living in His presence. You see, and uh, we'll try to be quick, hurry, so you can get away till we get to work again for Monday morning. And uh, we're grateful for all of you. I just don't know what we would, what I would do without you. I yeah, just, I just couldn't get along right. without you. And I want to give a special thanks to that sister William. I guess I don't even know the woman. When I got up this morning, my uh, brother Charlie Cox is there, and, and the, the doorstep was setting full of food, canned goods and things. How oh, that poor little woman must have sweated it out this summer, uh, canning that stuff, the tomatoes and things of food. Now, that means so much to me. And Sister Williams, I believe you left your Bible there to be prayed, said to pray that God I prayed this morning in the room when I was studying for the message, that God would take the contents of that Bible and place it in your heart. And I pray that God will bless you. Wish I could pay for that, Sister. I know you sure went through a lot to sweat that out. And I thank you so much. It's so little to say. But let me give you a scripture where we know, as I said last night, won't fail. Jesus said, Insomuch as you have done unto the least, and that would be me, see, the least of these little ones of mine, you have did it unto me. And may it return to you just the way it would be if you give it right over into his hands. God bless you for that. Thank all of you. When you hear, uh, find out on the, the uh, tithings and things that you pay, that's your confidence in us that will go for the kingdom of God. Now, we are responsible for that. See? And got to give an account for it. So we want to watch everything that we do to make every move just as perfect as we can the way our Lord would want it. Amen. Because we don't know what time He's going to call on us to answer and then give an account for everything that's come our way. That's the reason I think Paul last night only had one coat. He could have had more. But he didn't. That's one coat's all he could use at a time, so he just kept that one. I don't think he cared for the riches of the world. Amen. I don't think he cared for the popularity. You know what I mean? Everybody in their great religious moves as it is today. And so many people, I know this is being taped. And when I say things here, I realize I'm not only talking this congregation, but across the world. And I. 
because these tapes go out to many, many nations, and they take them even back in the tribes in Africa, back in there, and sit there, and the minister takes it and interprets those tapes to the people, uh, back and where they don't even know which is right and left hand. Way back into Australia and through there where uh, people uh, are, don't even, the only thing they eat is, the way they get sugar is take a little shell and dig out a bunch of ants and bite the back of them off like that. That's how they exist on getting their sugar. And they don't have clothing. They don't have nothing. They take an old kangaroo and throw him up on a fire. <clears throat> Insides in him, entrails and everything is scorching a little. And then eat it. And that's, uh, that, it's terrible. And remember, these tapes are played back in there. The message you're listening to here is played back in there. But hundreds of missionaries taking these tapes and playing them back in there and interpreting it to the people. So you see... When I get there on the day of the judgment, you see what's going to be resting up on my shoulders? What if I mislead somebody? See? There you are. Just think of one of those souls. And if I mislead them to the wrong thing. Therefore, I've got here my brethren in these organizations. And many of them are fine men. Most of them. I'm glad of that. But some of them become so... And usually leaders come to a place that they have to tie right in and make it like a... Oh, like a political affair. They play politics in it. And in that, they get it all for the Word of God. And I must remain on the Word. Yes, sir. I, I Amen. must be. And um, it just has to come to this. And I, I, I just have to move with it. That's all. Amen. So, uh, we're, you know, we, let's sing a little song. We're floating down the stream of time. We have not long to stay. You've heard it. Yeah. The stormy clouds of darkness will turn to brighter days. That's right. Let us all take courage, for we're not left alone. That's right. The lifeboat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. That's the time where I expect them to have the coat that won't never wear out. <laughs> the eternal one. And it must be true to God, not paying attention to things here on earth until we get over there. And then we have, that's the ones that's going to last. So I, in these 30 Going on 32 years of ministry, I have tried to stay true to the Word. I don't know of one thing I've ever had to alter on because I just read it out of the Bible, said just what the Bible says, and let it go like that. And so I haven't had to take back or rearrange because I just said it the way that the Bible says it. And I find out if God has spoken anything, then we must go with that Word in order to make it be fulfilled. Amen. We've seen that, as I told you last night, I have a vision just recently, see, that it, I had to be there and warning to be there and telling me six months before to be on that spot and standing there and saying, go down there three times with them. And I just walked on with the other man and the vision passed right through exactly God's part. And I was left standing. So we want to remember, you've got to stay on the Word. Stay right with the Word. Where the Word leads, you go right with the Word. And it'll bring you out all right, I'm sure. Yeah, but. Now, I know you've been in here since 8 o'clock, and it's probably 10 o'clock right now. It is. So let us pray now to our Lord. Is there any special request? I see a lot of hanks just laying here. Raise up your hands for a request. God bless you. Yeah, but. Now, he... I've known him long enough to know this, that he sees every hand and knows every heart. And the only thing left to do is just ask Him. And you believe it, and it happens. You believe as we pray. Heavenly Father, we are now approaching the great and mighty throne of God. As mortal beings in a natural body, yet our voices speaking out the words is coming into that great throne somewhere in the other dimensions where God sits. Because Jesus said, you ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. And he asked us not to doubt, but when we pray to believe that we receive that what we ask for. And it would be given to us. Said even you can say to this mountain, be moved. And don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you have said will come to pass and you can have what you said. Father, we know that that is so true. We watch it day by day. And there's no fault in your word. It's because we can't be at the spot. Sometimes our faith won't move us up there. We flusterate and doubt. 
But this morning we're trying to come, Lord, with a new hope, holding on to the lifeline of Christ and His promise. And we're coming into the presence of God through Jesus' name. Lord, I'm sure that you know all the requests that was made known under the hand this morning that raised up. Mine also was raised up. And it's constantly up to you, Lord, because I am a needy person. And I pray that you'll grant every request. Look upon them, Lord, and answer their requests from the youngest to the oldest, from the least of requests to the greatest request. Then, Father, answer them, every one I ask it in Jesus' name. Then remember mine, Lord. Now I pray and thank you for giving us good rest in our bodies and for the knowledge that we have of your word and the understanding we have of the Spirit and constantly praying that you will give us greater understanding so that we might not be a vain, puffed-up people, fine, but a humble people in order that the Holy Spirit might be able to use us to the fulfilling of the Word of God and to place us positionally where we need to be at this hour. For we must be at the right place for it to happen. And we want to be, Lord, if it's a housewife behind the table, if it's for a, a factory man with a wrench in his hand and a testimony, if it's for the minister in the pulpit or the deacon or trustee or for the child at school, the teenager in the discussion at the class, wherever it is, Lord, let us be there at the right time. Amen. For we know you've promised it. And it's going to happen because you said so. And whilst our faith is built there. Now, Lord, we feel that we haven't got much longer. The time is coming in. We can feel the fog from the outer space as it moves in. We know that the judgment and wrath of God is ready to fall. We can feel the effects of it already. And we pray, Lord, that you'll help us. And now help me, Lord, on this little message this morning of about 30 minutes called Countdown. Help us, Lord, to understand right where we're at. And sanctify us now, Lord, taking away our sins and trespasses. And may there not be one person here this morning lost. May everyone be ready. Be in that great circle when we meet at the other side. When the roll is called, may I hear the name at your name present. That's what we're looking for, Lord. And the old will be young there forever, transformed in a moment of time. Immortal shall stand in his likeness. Thank you. The sun and the stars outshine, as Daniel said. Those who have turned many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever. But we hear what you said to the prophet, Go thy way, Daniel, for thou shalt rest in thy lot. But in that day you'll stand. Yes, amen. Amen. O oh God, let us be counted worthy through the blood of Jesus. No merits of our own do we claim, but through his merits may we be worthy to stand at that day as we confess our wrong and desire to stand in His righteousness with the great prophet Daniel and all those who will stand when the rewards are given. Until then, Lord, make us instruments in Your hand. Make our ears instruments this morning of hearing the Word. Make my lips instruments of speaking. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And may our understanding understand the will of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's so hard to get started. It looks like there's so much you could say and, and want to say, and it uh, seems like there's such little time to say it. Maybe before I, I leave, I said last night, we might get a chance to, to uh, maybe run one of the books of the Bible this fall or winter before leaving. Going, I want to go overseas, the Lord willing, uh, right after Christmas sometime. 
Now, I wish you to turn this morning for the readings to Hebrews 11th chapter. And now listen real close to the reading. I want to, to emphasize on the third verse. Now, faith is the substance of things that hope for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now that's kind of an odd uh, uh, text uh, for background for the text that I, I want to use. Things were not made of things which do appear. Now, I want to use this subject this morning, countdown, because I want to make a, a parallel in the way of prophetic. Uh, last night I wanted to teach a little on the Scripture. This morning a prophetic message, and tonight an evangelistic message. Now, Things that were made of things that do not appear. Now, I have learned through all these years that all things that are natural are types of spiritual things. Everything that's in the natural. And now, just remember that when you see anything in the natural, it is typifying a spiritual thing. See? All things are made after things which do not appear. See, the natural then has reflected the spiritual. Now, as I was studying a few days ago, and I believe I mentioned it last night slightly, that I was reading where, or hearing on the radio coming in from Canada of where that the, a doctor here in the United States had had made a statement that man was 14 million years of evolution. They dug up a bone over in Italy in 1800, somewhere in the 1800s, that this bone was supposed to be a human bone that was being miked by the, while they do it, to tell how old it was. And this doctor, as an old man, and has put all of his life on studying on this bone. And he says this bone is a bone of a man that's 14 million years old. Now how nonsense that is. How a man has thrown his life away for nothing trying to disprove the Word of God. And he's got nothing but just an a endless destination. Amen out of it. And anyone knows that if you'd bury a bone in the ground, within 20 years, that bone is turning. Within 100 years, that bone's about gone. Just pieces of it. And no matter what condition you'd put it in, and then within a thousand years, what would that bone be? Ten hundred years. Amen. Well, what would be ten times that would be one million and fourteen times the million. Oh, my. <laughs> it's just, it's not even sensible to even think of such a thing. A bone would not last fourteen million years under any condition. Anyone knows that. You might have picked up something that looked like a bone or something, and then how well could they tell it was fourteen million years old? See? After all, God made man on the earth 6,000 years ago, and that settles it. Someone was discussing with me some time ago on one of my meetings. I was speaking on the evolution of man and said he was only 6,000 years old. And this man said, well, Brother Bram, we can prove that the world is millions of years old. So the thing that you're talking about, you're all wrong. I said, don't you believe the Bible? He said, I believe that man wrote the Bible. And I said, 
Truly, the hand of man formed the letters, but the Holy Spirit was behind the hand. Formed the letter. Because the Bible said so. And he said, well, they're, they're, you've got to admit that they're wrong on the world. I said, the Bible's never wrong. Amen. Never wrong. He said, well, if the world said, uh, was, you can see the mountains, how they was pushed up from volcanic. I said, but you just, he said, and God made that world in six days. I said, now the Bible didn't say that. <laughs> you just thought it said it. I said, let's just go back now to settle your argument. The first chapter of Genesis said, In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, period. How long He was doing it, I don't know. He didn't tell us. But in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, period. Then, and the world was out for Him. That's when God started to use it. See? So they just beat their brains out for nothing. See? See? God made the world. He might have been a hundred trillion years making it. I don't know how long He was, but He made it. Amen. And he didn't say how long it was. It's none of our business how long it was. Amen. He just said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, period. That settles it. That's all of it. How long he was doing it? That's that. But then the creation began to spring up now in the other time. When he began. And I believe that in there, that everything on earth reflects heaven. Amen. I believe that because that you see everything struggling... For life is because that there is a life that it's reflected from. And I believe that when God made the man, he started reflecting the smaller things, such as the animal life. And then uh, the next thing he created was something different. That's just exactly the way the Bible says he did it. He made first the trees and the botany life, and he made man. And then the last thing that ever come from the earth in the form of creation was a man. Nothing higher ever come because why? It was a perfect reflection of the highest in heaven, which God is a man. See? God is a man, so therefore it proves it. And when God came down to dwell among us, he was a man. See? A man. So it shows that the perfection of evolution was God, which is a man. And then you take a tree. You take the grass and so forth, take a tree, it reflects the tree of life, which is in heaven. All these things are struggling for perfection. And everything in the natural, as Hebrews says here, was made of things which do not appear. In other words, they are supernatural. And the supernatural is reflecting the natural. See? Now... And the natural was eternal or to be everlasting with the supernatural, but sin perverted the natural. So, and if that is so, which I believe it is, then everything that's happening on earth is a type of spiritual things that's happening. It's got to reflect something. The achievement of man. Now, we find out, like the natural body, Here's the natural body. And the body was made to reproduce itself, which was children. And now the natural body, in the natural birth of a baby, we find out the first thing comes forth is water, then blood, then life. We find out in the spiritual body of Christ, the first thing is water and blood and life. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, how it reflects all the natural things reflecting the spiritual things. The natural birth, we take, for instance, the marriage for union. We find out at the marriage, we find the courtship and the agreements, and then the marriage. That should set it for all the time. Now, that's the same thing it is with Christ and the church. See, a courtship, God calling to our hearts. We surrender the marriage ceremony and the bride takes the bridegroom's name. There it is. That makes it bride. Now, always the bride takes the bridegroom's name. There's so many things that we could speak of here. i got a list wrote down that take me two hours to get to it nearly. And scriptures to back this up. Like if you want some of them here to back it up like... 1 John 5, 7 shows a natural and the spiritual birth and so forth, water, blood, and spirit, and three in heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. These three are one. 
There are three that agree in earth. They're not one, but they agree in one in the earth. That's water, blood, and spirit. See? Water, blood, and spirit, like the natural birth type. So if a man sets on the thought of just justification is all you have to have, he's wrong. Amen. Wrong. He's got to be wrong. And then if the church who believes, like the many of the Pentecostals, that the Holy Ghost is it, that's all just repent and get the Holy Ghost, that's still wrong because you've got to get sanctification there to cleanse it before the Holy Ghost comes in. If you don't, you leave out the blood. See? And um, the new birth is people talks that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the new birth. Now, that's wrong. A baptism of the Holy Ghost is different from the new birth. The new birth is when you're born again. But the Holy Ghost is when power comes into that birth for service. That's exactly it. The Holy Ghost is baptized into the Holy Ghost. The new birth, you have the new birth by being, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. See, by having faith and accepting Him as your Savior, that's birth. See, because you pass from death unto life. Now, if you want to back that up, take St. John 5, 24. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. See? He's got life because he believes in that same group had to go to Pentecost to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That Holy Ghost is power for service. So when I talk about you've got to be born again and applying that to the Holy Ghost, many of the Methodists and so forth are wrong. It, cannot, it just won't cope through the Scripture. You, you get the thing sideways. It's got to take it the way the Scripture's got it placed out here. See? And the Holy Spirit is a... You shall receive the new birth. After this, what? No. You shall receive power. Acts 1.8. After this, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. See? And they already believed to eternal life and so forth. But they had to have the Holy Ghost for power. You shall be witnesses unto me after the Holy Ghost has come upon you because the Holy Ghost is a witness of the resurrection. Showing that you have become an adult in Christ. Now, the natural. All things spiritual, all happenings and so forth, type or type the supernatural. Or the, su- the natural is a type of the supernatural. Now, I went to the World's Fair when we was right up close to it there in Spokane. And I thought I'd take the family because I was only at one World Fair in the United States. And that's when it was in Chicago. Years ago, Hope and I went up. And we didn't get to stay there for about one day. The pickpockets and everything. She had a pin that her, my cousin gave her. And I walk around along the side of her. Somebody got the pin off. It was, it was just terrific. <laughs> and so I, um, we stayed one day and come back. But the World's Fair, I'd taken the family and went over. It was no more than the Louisville Fair right over here. You seen the Space Needle they talked about. It was nothing else but go over here at the Ellsby Bill or the... Uh, Brown building is somewhere and go up about eight or ten flights on an elevator and come back down. That was it. And I think the General Electric was the one who had that there. But there was one thing that was outstanding. Now, Germany had their display. Russia and all their other nations had it because it's a World's Fair. The German, France, and those little displays was not much bigger room than this pulpit would be right here. But the scientists had their achievements. And the main thing they were they were exercising on was the use of tobacco. And if any man who smokes cigarettes and walk in there and come out and smoke again, there's something wrong with the man's mind. When I've seen them with my own eyes, take a cigarette and place it in a machine and pull the, the tobacco smoke from there and puff it through a tube of chemicals and the white cancer was just filled with it with one cigarette. And then he said, many people say, these worldwide highest achievement on it, said many people say, I don't inhale it. And the scientist took the cigarette himself and puffed the puff of it in his mouth, not blowing it through his nostrils or how he bring it down their lungs, but just puffed it in his mouth and then blowed it into the same chemicals. There was none of the cancer in it. So where did it go? In my mouth. When I swallow it, it goes into the stomach. Of course. He said, now, then the thought come up, why does doctors say that cigarettes are not harmful? He said, any man that would sell his birthrights, 
A doctor make a statement that guy can retire because them cigarette companies are good enough to retire on. He actually sells his birthrights because he swore not to do a thing like that. But they do it anyhow. Yeah. And he said, here is the machinery now. We will prove it to you by scientific achievement. And they had Yul Brenner, you know, the movie star in there. That, and when that little teeny partial of nicotine, he said, now they say filter tips. He said, a man that does that just shows his mental condition. For if you haven't got any smoke, you haven't got any tar, and tar makes smoke. And if you're smoking a filter tip cigarette, said it'll take about three or four to satisfy what one of them because it just takes that much more tar to satisfy. If you don't get no smoke, you ain't no tar. Have to have tar to have smoke. So that's it. It said, smoke, if you go to smoke it, smoke one. It says, got no tip on it. Just gets one cigarette. It'll satisfy where it takes three of the others because you're just pulling that much less tire. It's a sales gimmick. That's all the nation's full of. It's right. sales gimmicks that's and right. filth and everything yeah. else. And there. Then he took that and showed how that one little parcel caught into the throat or into the lungs. And first it's white. Then it turns pink. Then from pink it turns purple. Uh, or, uh, particle, particle of the little cell looked that big through the glass. But of course you need to take a powerful glass to even see the cell. Then he says when it turns purple, you have cancer. He said a man that will smoke one pack of cigarettes a day has 70% more chance of dying with cancer than the man that doesn't smoke it. And it seems silly to take such a chance. Amen. Now, and then he took... Another thing that proved it, he brought out a white rat and he took a cigarette and put it in a machine and pulled it across some kind of a something like white marble and took a, a swab and took the nicotine out of one cigarette and painted on the rat's back. Every seven days, they had another rat coming out and they'd have to have each one for the lesson of that day and put that rat in for seven days and brought it out. Cancer stood that high on the rat's back. Some of them don't even live the seven days out. The rat couldn't move. I couldn't eat for two or three days to look at that nasty looking thing. Standing there, the cancer and it running down over his legs and things like that. A great big high cancer swelled up nearly a half inch on the rat's back. Of one nicotine out of one cigarette. And you think that stopped him? A big fellow sitting by me there and the sweat running off his face says, Connie, striking, isn't it? I said, Do you smoke? He said, Yes, sir, I do. I said, Well, then you ought to stop. That, but that's it. Achievements. What they can prove that it does it. Now, I have predicted if the world stands and if civilization exists, back in the time of prohibition, when there was a, such a fine to sell a bottle of whiskey, it'll be ten times that fine to sell a pack of cigarettes in a few years from now. If civilization exists. It's ten times worse than whiskey. I believe it. Sure is. It's it's a killer that, yes. and you can tell the people about it. They don't pay a bit more attention Amen. to it. It's a holy roller preacher and let it go. It seems that's it. They don't notice. But my point is this: what scientific things has been able to achieve? They were there at the World Fair showing by scientific research what science has been able to achieve in the natural things. Now we are here showing by spiritual research what God has been able to achieve with people who will believe His Word. Amen. 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 Now to achieve scientific things, you've got to work in scientific lines. To achieve spiritual things, you've got to work in spiritual lines. Now you think that rat looked horrible, in which it did. You should have seen it. Wish I had a picture of it even to show if I could have got it, I would, but they wouldn't let you have it. But notice, of course, the rat just lives a few more hours. Some of them don't even live the seven days out. But think of it. You think that looked cankered. You ought to see what a soul looks that's turned down the gospel. You ought to look what a hideous looking thing they are. How the devil gets a hold of a man and can pervert a son of God into a hideous looking thing like he is in the eyes of God. Oh, he might be six foot tall or shoulders like I don't know what and curly hair and what. That don't mean nothing. It's the inside of the man that's lasting the outside dust anyhow. 
So it's achievement. And then they would show, had this space needle and everything, what they'd showed to achieve, what they had been able to do and explaining all their atomics and so forth. They had a prediction of what the Chevrolet would be. General Motors had on display what the, in another, the next century, what the 20th century Chevrolet would look like. It looked to me like a, a gas pipe with a hood over the top of it. Now, they showed how it would work and would fire by an atomic power with some sort of a wing that would lift up over one another and control. That would be a, a great advantage. But I wonder if we could turn back in the pages of God's book this morning and see what the church will look like at that time. See the achievements that God has made. Oh, how happenings always in this earth are representing something that comes from somewhere else, but when it strikes the earth, it's usually in a perverted condition because it is in the world of darkness and sin. See, but then there is a true representation in the spiritual realms of the other dimension. From being in the three dimensions, then the sixth dimension has its representation. I'm so glad of that. Now, let's just take the achievements now that we've been able to do in the last few years. Now, let's start on something that's happened. I won't keep you long, the Lord willing, but I want you to see this quickly. And oh, when it comes to me, I felt like flying away. <laughs> now, notice. Now, a few years ago, the transportation was by horse and buggy. Not too far ago, long ago. I done my driving around in a horse and buggy and on a saddle. And when I was a boy, 15 years old, 16, I rode a horse. And I went to town in a horse and buggy driving right by this church here, a muddy road out there and a swamp here full of weeds as high as the building almost of a, with a horse and wagon delivering butter beans and things off the farm. Now, I uh, pass it in a souped-up car. What a difference. The horse and buggy day, then the automobile day, and then the airplane day come along that went from the earth into the air. Now, if you watch, as sure as that achievement was by science, if the person will have a spiritual mind and understand yeah, it represented a achievement of God's economy with His church. Amen. Amen. Now, the days, and remember the messenger is always comes at the end of the message. We know in the church ages there how we got that. Now, the horse and buggy days was who? That was the ending of the Lutheran age. See? Horse and buggy days, they believed in justification. God Bringing the church from Romanism, Catholicism, he brought it into its first spiritual achievement that the just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. That was the horse and buggy days as it come from the, uh, to the horse and buggy days that ended. Now, the next achievement man had in the way of transportation was uh, the automobile. And you notice... That automobile increases all the time in its uh, power. Now, at the end of the Wesley age, brought in by spiritual achievement, sanctification, which means the church raised from a justified state to a sanctified state. Now, I want you to remember this as we go along, that the church called church is not the church. Amen. The church is church spiritual. Amen. Tens of thousands times thousands of Lutherans that join the church know no more about justification than a hog note about a side set. They, they know nothing of it. And in the Wesley age, how the tens of thousands profess sanctification, they know no more about sanctifying power of God than, than a rabbit does about snowshoes. See, they absolutely didn't know it, but there was a people who achieved it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see where I'm getting to? 
There was somebody knowing what justified meant in the sight of God, having peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There were some of those Lutherans who were loyal. They believed it. No matter what the Catholic Church said, they believed Amen. God's Amen. Word and stood on it. Amen. Because a messenger of that age preached, the just shall live by faith. And they believed in a justified state. And they was able, by the grace of God, to achieve justification, have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we notice again, along came the Methodists with sanctification. There was many of those Methodists was actually sanctified. Amen. Now, there's a lot of them claimed to know nothing about it. The Methodist church taught sanctification. They said they got out and cried and got back up and said, Glory to God, I'm sanctified. And they went right on living like they always did. Amen. But some of those men and women was actually sanctified Amen. from the things of the world and lived a consecrated, set-aside life. Amen. Why? That was an automobile. Age which tuck in more horsepower. Automobile with the old T model is probably 15 or 20 horsepower. See? Had 15 or 20 horses bottled up in a little engine like that. Sanctification. When science achieves something by, by, by the natural, God's achieving something by the spiritual. See? Something's going on all the time. And then, after the sanctified age, now we take man, like old Barrington. Man, who would have been a greater man than old brother of Barrington? I look at John Wesley, George Whitfield, Feeney, Knox, many of those old Methodists who sweated out. They went to hell on earth, torment, because... They believe that God's Word taught sanctification, Amen. the second step of grace. Amen. And they stayed with it. And they believed it. And they've done wonders with it. Just the same as Henry Ford and them done with the transportation of the old Model T Ford up the side of the horse. Amen. He moved on and above the horse day. And Wesley moved on and above the Lutheran day. Amen. And then along come Pentecost. And as science of the world was able to achieve a, a automobile motor, the Wright brothers that created or made, manufactured rather, the airplane, the flying machine, was far above the car on the earth because he took to the air. Now, the Wright brothers, through their achievement, was able to take signs and pattern something here on earth to show that there was a great spiritual thing fixing to happen. Amen. And when the Wright brothers was able to achieve to get a man's feet off the ground, Pentecost fell and tucked to the air with the spiritual gift. Hallelujah. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it tucked to the air. Oh, how got his feet off the ground so he could, he could swim around. Hallelujah. Got up in the air. Oh, how far he was above the horse and buggy. How far he was above the automobile. He was up in the air. He was knocking and puffing and banging, but he was flying. <laughs> See, what man achieves on earth for they're made of things which do not appear. God was able to achieve something by a spirit-filled people who were hungering and thirsting and those that would stay with the Word. Now, if Wesley had to step out on the Word and got a bad name behind him as called a crazy man and everything else, he would have never been able to achieve. But Wesley was one of God's great scientists. Amen. Luther was one of God's great scientists. They didn't care what the churches said, what the organization said. Amen. Luther didn't care what the Catholics said. He believed that just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And he took God's chemicals of the Word and put it together. And the church moved by faith. Amen. 
Once we put it together by the blood and proved it by the blood and the church got sanctified. The Pentecostals believe that the baptism of the Holy Ghost that the promises to you and your children and them is far off. And they put the chemicals together of the Word and they moved into the air. Hallelujah. They moved out because they were able to be able to accomplish such. Now, why did these men do this? Why did Luther find it? Why did Wesley find it? Why did these others? Because the material was laying here on earth that could make a T-model form. There was electricity that could make a, a car to run. There was gasoline in the earth. There was uh, pistons and so forth, all the mechanics, carbon for the generator and everything they had to have to create this stuff. And notice it started, uh, manufactured rather, not created, God's created. Amen. He had it laying here. Amen. But man who believed it in the scientific realm of the natural probed into it and they wouldn't take no for an answer. Amen. They believed it. It was a revelation in their heart and they stayed with it Amen. until they proved that it was right. Hallelujah. That's how the John Wesley proved sanctification. Well, the, the material was laying here, the Word of God that taught it. Yeah. Glory to Jesus. Believe it. No matter if the whole church, the Anglican church and all turned him down, he stayed with his conviction. Amen. And he proved it. And the Pentecostals come around and prove because they had the material Amen. that the Holy Ghost was right. Amen. And they took to the air. Did you notice one, one of those scientific achievements accomplished the other one, complemented the other one. It was only a higher form. See, the automobile was a higher form of transportation than the horse. And the airplane was a higher form of transportation than the automobile, but they accompanied one another. Horsepower. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. If that's horsepower, what about God power? Amen. What about the Holy Ghost and power? Amen. The Holy Ghost power that can justify you. The same Holy Ghost power can Amen. sanctify you. Amen. The same Holy Ghost power that sanctifies you can fill you with His presence. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Little science that didn't know their ABCs found it. Uh, ah, they were spiritual scientists. Uh, Amen. Uh, they seen uh, the thing, they believed it. Man did it by education. The natural scientists. The spiritual scientists done it by revelation. Uh, One by education, the other by revelation. Uh, oh, if we just open up. There's all kinds of material laying here. Amen. That's right. Uh, now we notice how it goes, how God was able to achieve that. And the Pentecostals taken to the air. How they then was restored back to the church, healing, speaking in tongues, revelation, Amen. gifts of the Spirit. Amen. That Luther know nothing about, neither did Wesley. They never taught it. They know nothing about it. Without their age. Why, well, what would Henry Ford know about an airplane in them days? Before the Wright brothers. See? They wouldn't have known it. And the same thing that uh, the man back there driving a horse and buggy 500 years ago wouldn't know nothing about a horse's carriage. Only the Bible said it would be there. Amen. <laughs> so they was able to achieve it by scientific research. And when it happened on earth, God represented with an achievement by His church. Amen. For things Amen. which are do appear was made of things that does not appear. See? The reflection of it. Now, now the Pentecostal age for the last 50 years has sent a revival around the world with all kinds of everything in it. And they've had healings and sickness being healed, cripples healed, blind had their sight restored to them. Do you think the world believed it? No, sir. They didn't believe Luther. They didn't believe Wesley. They didn't believe the Pentecostals. But God took the Bible in His research. A man who was willing to do it took the Bible and proved to it that it was right. Amen. Amen. Now we got to remember that. We got to believe it. Seeing those things were a type. 
Now we've lived up to Pentecostal age. The Pentecostal age that I've proved over there goes out into the Lady of Sin age. But now, something else has happened. We got an astronaut now. <laughs> John Glenn was our first astronaut. And we find out that that's so far beyond an airplane. The airplane can only go as far as its pressure and so forth. But this is by an atomic power, a greater power that presses him so much higher than an airplane. An airplane even isn't in it. Amen. Right. He's been able to do that. All right. Now we got an astronaut, natural age. And remember, the messenger comes at the end of the former message. Hey, Always. Always. We prove that there. Now we're on the astronaut line. Amen. Hey, hey, God. God has, science has been able to prove that there's an astronaut that can go so far that you couldn't see it with your natural eyes. And he can go where there's any pressure there or not. He can just go on out because in a pressurized tank. And he can go up there and sail around and see the world around. An astronaut. Oh, my. What an age that that is coming. <laughs> yes, sir. Go beyond any natural things at all. Sweep them on out of the What does it represent? A spiritual age. A spiritual time. The word God's going to have spiritual astronauts. astronauts. <laughs> Glory that can take the word of God and prove that he's the same yesterday. Glory. A spiritual astronaut. <laughs> oh my. Glory. That makes me feel good. Living in this age. Now what a wonderful thing for a spiritual astronaut. See? What is it? What did the natural science do? Has been able to achieve that. And God, through man who would stay with the Bible and say that he's the same yesterday and forever and not afraid of the promise regardless of what anybody said, stay with it. What is it? You're becoming an astronaut that can go so far as beyond denominational things. It's beyond anything else. It's beyond the things of the church. I wonder with God and Him alone you stay. Oh. And remember, in order to get be an astronaut, they had to get in a tank. And they can't control themselves. It takes a radar power and an atomic power to lift him out beyond space. And then he's controlled by a tower. <laughs> Glory! God's spiritual astronauts is the same. They come into a tank, into a place, into a body. Amen. And that body is the body of Christ. Amen. Then it's not them. It, it's not, it wasn't John Glenn. It was, it was the tank that he was in. It was the machine. He just sat there. He didn't do nothing. He just had the real pure courage to get up there and say it's right because science had proved it. Amen. God wants man who can come into Christ Amen. and believe that he's the same yesterday and then forever and don't take your own thing. Move out into the space controlled by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Astronauts. Hallelujah. How far it is back from the horse and buggy? How far it is even from the airplane? How far it is from justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost? They are coming to eagles. The first they were lizards. Then they become chickens. Then they become crows. <laughs> but now they're eagles. No one can follow them. An eagle is a special bird. He can go higher than any other bird. He's prepared to see, keep his head level when he gets up there. And some people can jump way up, don't know where they're at, they get there. Because he can't see no further than what he's jumped. But there's some that can look back and see what's going on. That's the eagle. He can stand there until he looks it over and waits till he hears a message that tells him what to say. That's the astronaut of God. It's followed all the other achievements, 
Why won't it follow this achievement? Astronauts for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory. Don't even leave by his own power. He's fired out. <laughs> all he does is get into it. That's all you have to do is get into it. God will do the shooting and the placing. It ain't gasoline power no more either. Some church creed. It's God's atom power that pushes you from out of space. Out there. Amen. Oh, why? Wow. What is it, these astronauts? They've got the... They never need just tuck the word justification, just the word sanctification. He's got into the whole Bible. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's got into all of it because that he knows that God is able to perform every promise he ever made. Amen. He just sits there. <laughs> Amen. And waits. <laughs> oh my. The word's bound to manifest itself. Amen. If you're sick and an astronaut, just remember, get any Christ, wait, the countdown. Yeah, all. Oh, He'll fire the bullet, don't worry. Now, been able to achieve it because God promised it. Now, how much greater is the astronaut, these things now from the old horsepower, automobile power, and, um, and the uh, airplane power? You see, the astronaut... He's so high that he can see things that a man in a horse and buggy couldn't see. Amen. He's so high, he can see things that a man in an automobile couldn't see. Amen. He's so high that he can see things that a man flying an airplane can't see. Amen. He's done what plumb out of reason. <laughs> hey, Done went beyond any achievement man could think of. The organization, the denomination, had to be Methodist, Baptist, or one this, or the one that's two this, or whatever it is. He's an astronaut. He's sailed off. Amen. How thankful I am. And remember, the astronaut is controlled by a radar power. You seen him bring John Glenn in? I looked down there at Cape Bernardo and seen that great big radar thing. You couldn't even see him nowhere. But you could tell where he was by the way that radar was pointing. That's where he was at. See? Yeah. And we got a radar too. It's prayer. Yeah. Prayer is a radar of power that directs the astronaut. Ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. Yeah. Just watch the way the prayer is going, you see where he's pointing. Hey. Hey. Just watch the way the churches are praying. You can see the way the missiles are flying. <laughs> you tell it by the, the way the astronauts are traveling, by the way the church is praying. He prays, Lord, of course, we don't believe in these things. Uh-uh, that astronaut's coming down. <laughs> That's all. Oh, brother. But when all things are possible, Lord, pour out your spirit upon the church and give it what we have need of. Amen. Pour up on us the Holy Ghost and just take us out of every reason and believe in that word right we're going to stand right by. Watch the screen then begin to raise his head like this. Amen. The astronaut's going on. Way up in there. Mm. Wonderful. Goes beyond any denomination. Goes beyond any creed. I remember justification is lauded to a creed. That's right. You believe justification like somewhere like the uh, Luther's and any of their satellites? <laughs> That's what they are. Satellites. But they ain't off the ground yet. <laughs> you take uh, sanctification and their satellites. Say, what is the satellites to the Lutheran? Well, Church of Christ and that bunch there. What is the satellites to the Wesley, to the Methodists like that? Nazarene, Pilgrim Holiness, their satellites. And then the Pentecostal and their satellites. Their airplane. Sure, the one that's two and the three and four to sell all these of them. The four square church of God, all still created in denomination, but the astronaut breaks the sound barrier. He just goes on and on. He don't hear nothing. Oh, my, this goes beyond all of it. He's way up in there. We're all things. He's living in the presence of God. Yes, sir. He promised it. His word says that he's the high priest. You see that great big radar sitting out there moving? Watch him in the meeting. You can watch when the Holy Spirit comes down in the form of a pillar of fire like He promised. Yeah, a man's not going to be sitting there trying to reason out with science, a real believer. What is he? He's a radar screen. Watch him. He begins to Amen. point around. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And it catches that one there, that Amen. astronaut. All the way back. You have cancer. You had so and so. You were so and so from such a place. Amen. The Lord Jesus make you well. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Astronauts. Oh my, what a church. It should be. It's here. Amen. The achievement's been proved by science. They showed it out here at the World's Fair. We got it. Amen. It's been proved everywhere. Astronaut age we're living in. See, it was made of things which do not appear. See, it was made of something out of heaven. It's God Himself. You're in that sixth dimension. It's the power of God. We've been in such a place so we have been lifted up into that dimension. Beyond this thing of going to the grave and weeping. Amen. This thing of putting the crape on the door out and saying goodbye forever. Hallelujah. Uh, we done amen. got in the astronaut and sailed off out there and see where it's at and return amen. back. Amen. Oh, amen. We're going to the home beyond the sky, or beyond the reasoning of man. How the old will be transformed in a moment of twinkling of eye. We shall see him there. Old men and women, young again. Amen. How do you know? The Bible teaches it. Amen. And God shot an astronaut up in there. Amen. We know what it's all about. Come Amen. back. Don't worry about dying. Amen. Dying's nothing. Sure, it's living. Yes, sir. It's just getting your feet off the ground. Amen. So he can go. Oh, how wonderful. He's promised all these things in his word. For Hebrews 13, 8 said he's the same yesterday and forever. The things that he was able, God could achieve by one man who would surrender himself to it, to the Word of God, because as I said last night, he always stood with the Word. Now, do you know, while astronauts is really no new thing, what about Elijah? If he wasn't an astronaut, I'd never seen one. He went where John Glenn never did think about going. <laughs> Well, you know, they had one tuck off in slow motion one time. His name was Enoch. He just walked on up. <laughs> but he was an astronaut. Sure. He was pressurized. He didn't have to be changed. Nothing. No, he was already pressurized when he started walking. He just walked right on out of all the dimensions Amen. and everything. Walked right in the presence of God. And so one old fellow was tired and couldn't walk very good anymore. He'd fuss with Jezebel and her short hair and paint and everything until God just sent a chariot down so let's let you ride up through the cloud. Astronaut. One time one come to die for the rest of us and God raised him up on the third day and 500 men stood there and see him being taken up into the cloud with a voice saying, I will come again. This same Jesus that was taken up, the master astronaut will return again in like manner in the same kind of a, a apartment that is in a body in marble. Hallelujah. Well, glory. And we will have a body like his own glorious body for we shall see him as he is. Oh, hallelujah. He broke all the sound barriers, all the reasoning barriers, and went beyond Amen. reason, went beyond Amen. anything else. And any man that ever lives for God will have to go beyond any five senses. Amen. He'll have to go on any education, any achievement that man's been able to do and believe God. Amen. Take everything you had aside and sweep up into the heaven. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> what astronauts and so forth has been achieved in the natural, God's been able to do it by His church by the spiritual, by a spiritual people who will believe any man or woman who will dare at any time, any time, to take God at His word. It's an astronaut. They'll say, oh, that isn't reasonable. Hear those people crying, shouting, hear this, oh, that's not even reasonable. That doesn't understand. Somebody told me, said, you had a dream, Brother Branham, when you seen that play. I never had no dream. I was standing up there looking down, where was me on the bed? I might have been dreaming on the bed, but I was up here looking down at myself. Man. Oh, he just gave me a little astronaut ride that morning. That's where it goes. And it shows that your radar will point it out. Exactly where it's at. Now, it isn't me. It's him. It's your spirit in you believing that message. And it's the Holy Ghost standing here where I'm at. And you believe it like that. And it contacts. And here it comes right back. Your answer. Astronaut. Amen. Oh, how wonderful. Yes, sir. Great. Science has done a great thing. And you know they've done it so great until they're getting scared of themselves. Yeah. That's right. they got so much greatness until they're afraid of themselves. You know they said here about two years ago, it was three minutes before midnight. They're scared. What are they doing? Now, man has been able 
uh, after his natural and a natural astro- astronaut. Now, he's been able to achieve this astronaut, and he thinks now that when Russia ever starts to blow this country up or some other country, he's going to sail off to the moon. I seen a little cutest thing the other day. It really was cute. There was two little Indians standing talking to one another, little pot bellies, you know, like that, and a feather up behind the head, just shaking one another's hands, patting one another. Said, Bruder, we'll soon have the country back to yourself. White man's going to the moon. <laughs> Said, we'll soon have our country back again. White man's going to war on the moon, so we'll have our own country again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. Now, they're all wanting to make a whole lot of these astronaut cans. So they get into it. The, the atomic age comes. They're going to bust up the world. They just pull this and all go over on the moon, taking a trip to the moon. And have it all over with. And so they'll just make them another economy on the moon. And you're going to get there. I don't believe with all my heart they'll ever get there. See? But at the same time, the real true believer in Christ has entered his astronaut. Amen. 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 Oh, By one spirit, we're all baptized into one astronaut. <laughs> oh, one body. <laughs> they can stand any kind of pressure. They tried it in a fire furnace and stand fire, yeah. so it can't burn up. Seven times hotter. They tried it and everything comes out all right. So the spiritual scientists have been able to prove they can't stand anything. So the, the real spiritual believer has accompanied himself and got into God's astronaut, Christ, believing all things, laying aside his creeds, the Pentecostal creeds, the Baptist creeds, the Methodist creeds. He's just got into the astronaut. Then, Lord, when's it ready? Oh, my. What's he doing? He's coming to little meetings, listening to the countdown of God's Word. Amen. You know, when John Cleon sat there that morning, Let's listen to the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. See? And now, he's got to a spot where he says, just three minutes till something's going to take off. They don't know what it is. Three minutes until we have the zero hour. Now, notice, the real believer is in Christ. No condemnation of them that's in Christ. Preach the Word. Stay right with the Word. I don't care what the denominations say. They're going to believe it. They'll stand right there because it's a word. The denomination will kick up a big fuss and excommunicate them, run them out and say they're crazy, everything like that, but they stay right with that word. As long as God promised it, they stay there because they're astronauts. Amen. They believe the word. Amen. And there's no way to get rid of them. They're going to leave you anyhow, so just, just let them alone a while. Amen. But they're in there, setting in heavenly places. Amen. In Christ Jesus, Amen. listening to the countdown, Amen. the church ages, and so forth. Yeah. Glory. Amen. Makes you feel good, don't it? Amen. Listening to the countdown. What's the countdown? All these things is promised, here's where it happened. All these things is promised, here's where it happened. Where it promised this, here's where it happened. The achievement that He promised today, here it is right among us. What are they doing? Listening to the countdown. How far has it come? All the way from Luther. <laughs> The countdown. <laughs> Justification. Sanctification. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. What? <laughs> what are they doing? Waiting for the takeoff. Amen. The zero hour. Amen. Amen. This great orbiting that the church is getting ready to do and the great time of the countdown, I'd like to explain to you what I think the countdown is. I think we've just been through it in the church here. And now, you notice that when the natural astronaut is getting ready to leave the earth, there is a countdown starting from ten back to zero. I haven't tried to break this message down and give it a spiritual application as it would take too much time this morning. But I want to try to explain this to you, that ten is a number of worldliness, man, but seven is the number of God's perfection. Six days He made the heavens and earth, and the seventh He rested. 
And 6,000 years the world is to labor against sin, or the church labor against sin, and the seventh is the millennium, the Sabbath. Seven is God's perfect number. And now, He has given us the correct countdown. And His countdown is not ten, but seven. We've just been through it in the seven church ages. Now we find out that over in Revelations, the first countdown was the first age. The second countdown, the second age. And on to the seventh countdown. And here visible before us as the pictures draw that we had this countdown. The first number counted was Ephesus. The second number counted was Samaria. Samaria. Then Pergamos, Thyatira, fifth was Sardis, sixth was Philadelphia, and seventh was the Lady Ocean, the last church age. Then it's the uh, zero. Time for the church to leave after the church ages has served their term. Now we know the Thyatira age has come and gone and the Ephesian age has come and gone. The Philadelphian age has come and gone and we are in the seventh church age at the end of it. The Lady Ocean age. And that is the countdown. If you notice... In our previous lessons of the churches, he held in his hand seven stars, which we found to be seven ministers of the seven church ages. Each one of them is perfectly identified as God took his countdown. Since the time he left, until the time he comes back, he's gathering together a people for his namesake. Amen. Started at the day of Pentecost. The first, the Ephesian church, the star and messenger of that church, we believe to be St. Paul. He has come, and number one has been counted off. The second church age, which is Smyrna, was Irenaeus, the great saint of God, who led that church age at the end. The third church age, which was Pergamos, was St. Columbia, which was a great saint of God. During the time of the dark age and the persecution of the fourth age in the fourth count, St. Martin of Taurus, the great saint coming from France. The fifth church age and its messenger was Martin Luther on the countdown. The sixth age was John Wesley on the countdown. Now we're in the seventh age, the Lady of Sin church age. And we are looking for that great messenger of the second appearing of Elisha on the countdown. And as soon as that appears, then it's zero time and the church takes its way home. Goes out into space, into the heavens, all beyond moon, stars, everything else, and meet Jesus. Where did this come from? And where did they go into this astronaut? How did the people get into the astronaut at the first place? That's the way they'll have to get into it in every place, every time. That's right. Have to come in by the same way the first did because this great orbit of a great body of people there in Noah's time, there was only one door, and that door was the only door of entrance. Everything that come in, no matter if they went to the first floor under justification, second floor, or third floor, they all come in at one door. They all come in the same way. And it's the same thing. And this day of astronaut, we have to come in the same way. Come by the same way. By the same message. By the same Christ. By the same power. That's received on the day of Pentecost. Amen. The same way. It has been all the time the same one because it's the same door. And how do we get into this body? By the door. And Jesus is the door to this body. Amen. So we come in and are born into the kingdom of God through the door, Jesus Christ. And now the door is just about to close at the Lady of Sin. Last countdown. 
and the church is fixing to take its orbit above all tribulations, Amen. all Amen. everything, Amen. and soar its way into the heavens of heavens, carrying the church to the bosom of God. Amen. 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 The morning when John, uh, this gleam took off down there, everybody was on their faces crying and praying, wondering what he was going to be able to achieve. And the first thing, the fire began to spread from them atoms as that great big missile lifted off there, Cape Tornado going up into the air like that, and people screaming and crying and wondering what would happen to their astronaut <laughs> that was going up. All but the church. Hallelujah. Glory! Hallelujah. She's spreading some fire too. <laughs> the truth is coming. Amen! Amen. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lady see in church age. We're at the end. Amen. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday and forever. What's the matter? 10, right. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Amen. Amen. Zero. Amen. They won't be crying, but they'll be singing and shouting Amen. and praising Amen. God oh, as the church Lord. takes this astronaut moving to the sky. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God. In the national achievement, they're taken off to the moon. In the spiritual achievement, we're taking off towards heaven. <laughs> the natural astronauts trying to find him a place on the moon. We'd already got a place in heaven. Already in my father's house are many mansions. I'll go and prepare a place for you and send an astronaut back to get you. <laughs> Countdown's on. You believe it? Amen. Countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Zero. Amen. The fire begins to spread. The ministry's crowning glory. Hallelujah. And the old rocket begins to take off. Not pointed towards the moon, but pointed towards glory. Now there she is, the fire of God spreading. The power of the Holy Ghost lifting her up from beyond the moon. Star. Hallelujah. Beyond anything. Whoa. 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 The church will take her flight to the bosoms of God in heaven. One of these mornings. Friends, a man has been able to achieve what they have by their natural things, and God, I've proved it here, has typed it by the spiritual. Let's get in the astronaut. Hey, 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 the hey, doors will be closed after a while. The countdown's on. Hey, Science says their countdown is three minutes. Ours may be ahead of that. <laughs> it might be one ready for zero. Let's come in. Do you believe the countdown's on? Amen. Let's bow our heads in just a moment. Father, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, God, nations are breaking, Israel awakening. The signs that the prophets foretold. The Gentile days numbered with horrors encumbered. Return, O dispersed, to your own. What a day the evening lights are shining. Oh, God, we pray that every unbeliever will quickly lay aside all of his educational thoughts, all of his ideas that's contrary to your word. And this morning we'll get into this glorious astronaut because we're born into it in there to become a part of the astronaut. I pray, Heavenly Father, that in this great body of Christ that you will baptize believers today with the Holy Ghost. May the pool be filled with people this morning confessing their sins and being buried in the name of Jesus Christ and boarding the old astronaut, Lord, that's going beyond the moon and stars, going beyond creeds, denominations. We've done had the countdown. You told us what would be the three be three stages of this. You told the church ages how they go. The first church age, second church age, third church age, fourth, fifth, sixth. This count is seven. And after seven, this age, we're already in it. The last church age. And now the countdown is on. The ages are done counted for. The Lutheran age, the Wesley age, the Pentecostal age. And now, Lord, gathering into the astronaut. With a great magnifying glass in front of it, we can see glory. See Jesus. See Him in all His power. See Him in all His promises. Everything that He promises reflecting upon us. We thank You for this. God, may the church today quickly get into the safety zone. 
For soon come the zero hour, and the door of the great astronaut will be closed. The astronaut plane. And we will go like Noah did when he got in his astronaut as it was. He floated in and above all the waters of judgment. Father, we want to get into you that we might be able to float through the streams of time. On a past Mars, Jupiter, Venus, over the Milky White Way, on and on and on, where the natural astronaut knows nothing about. But we see that you're letting him do that for a sign that we might be ready to go. We're moving from the earth. Grant it, Lord, through Jesus Christ's name, I ask it. Your lace handkerchiefs, Lord, laying here, that sick people is sent. They believe, Lord. May they become full-membered astronauts this morning. May the power of Almighty God who reflects His Bible upon this that they've taken from the body of St. Paul, handkerchiefs and aprons, and the sick and afflicted was healed. May that astronaut believer, when that touches him, take off, Lord. Sickness behind. May every sick person here right now, Lord, get right into Christ Jesus to His Word, His promise, and saying, Ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. May they start to count 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0. Go off, Lord. May they rise from cots, stretchers, whatever it might be. May they rise from their shackled down sickness to go out down in outer space where Dr. Science doesn't know anything about. For the power of God has promised by the scientific research of the Bible here, or the spiritual research, rather, of the Bible to show that God ever was. God still remains God. He'll always be God. And He is the infinite, omnipotent, almighty, omnipresent being that can keep His Word and can do all things and promises all things are possible to them that will believe. God grant it. May that wayward man or woman, boy or girl this morning that's not in there listening to the countdown of God's Word, knowing that we're right down done, counted the last thing off. She's ready to holler zero at any time in the church to go. We see the message ending up. We see the persecution arising as we talked of last night. We know that the time is at hand. The countdown is over. You've helped us here at the platform to bring the church ages down to take everything else and prove it that right now, that most any time it can happen. God Almighty, who created the heavens and earth, send your mercies upon the people and give to them that what you have for them is stored up. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And every man and woman with their head bowed, if there be some here that don't know Christ as their Savior this morning and would like to know Him and enter into this astronaut condition of God's grace to go in the rapture, would you raise your hand and say, I'm ready. I want to be ready for the rapture, Brother Branham. Pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. You. God bless you. And you. Outside, inside, wherever you are, just raise your hand. By this, say, God, take me in. God bless you. I want to hear the countdown. I want to hear it. I want to be, I know what I'm safe. That when the fire goes off, I'm not going to be sitting down here in a horse and buggy. I'm not going to be in a church riding in an automobile. I'm not going to be in one that can just get his feet off the ground loud long enough to jump and have a lot of noise. I want to be in something that's going to take me beyond the moon and the stars. I want to listen to the countdown. Not some creed, some organization, but I want to be in Christ. Or I can sail beyond anything that's reason among man. I want to go. Is there another before we pray? Is there God bless you, young lady. God bless you, young man. God bless you. And you back there, I see your hand, and God certainly sees it. And you, my brother, you brother. I want to be in the countdown. God let me lay aside every weight. God bless you, brother. I want to lay aside every sin. I've got a temper, brother Branham. Oh, I couldn't go in that like that. Pray God take it away from me. I, I, Brother Branham, I, I drink a little bit. I don't want to do that. Pray that I'll lay it aside. I smoke. I don't want to do that. God knows I don't want to do that. The things that's got me bound down so I, I just do it. I just can't get away from them. I know it's wrong and I shouldn't do it. I won't. Another thing. I've been doubting the Word. I've just been wondering if it really was right. Help me, God. Let me, let me just remember that all of it's right. And I believe it. I'm going to listen to the countdown. I want to a place where every time... I see the Word of God say anything. I want to punctuate it with an amen and say it's me, Lord. Now, all, God bless you. God bless you, every one of you. Is there some here now that's sick and say, Brother Branham, 
this morning, I am a Christian, but I'm, I've got the Holy Spirit. I've stepped off the plane now. I'm ready for the countdown. I've come out of all kinds of denominations and everything else listening to the countdown. But now, I want to say this one thing, Brother Branham, this morning. I'm sick. I've got some work to do for the Lord yet. I'm listening to the countdown, but I want to, I want to be well. I'm stepping over on it this morning, listening to the countdown. What's the countdown? The Word of God. It's kind of right down. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to hear him as my healer this morning. I want to raise up my hand and say, pray for me, Brother Brandon. God bless you. Step right in now. Step right in. The altar's folding around over here, piled up in the floor. We couldn't run a prayer line. They're standing around the walls and everything. We just have a conglomeration. We don't have to do that. You're in the, you're in the after, you're an astronaut. You are an astronaut. You're going beyond Luther. Luther don't believe in it at all. Wesley laid on hands. The Pentecostal anointing oil. You're an astronaut. <laughs> going beyond anything reasoning just because the Word said so. I'm going on. Well, you say, didn't Luther believe? Wasn't that the Word? Yeah. But Wesley went on above him. Well, Wesley anointed with oil or something. Like that. Should be that? Yes, that's right. The Pentecostal cast out devils. Yeah, laid hands on. Had healing in hands and everything else. Yeah, I know that's right. But go on. Go on. Wesley don't look back to Luther, Pentecost don't look back to Wesley. Neither we look back to Pentecost. Amen. We're astronauts. Yes. We're beyond that. Let's go on. Christ said so. Yes. How do you do it? Come lay your hands on my daughter and she'll be made well, said the Jew. Jesus went and did it for him. That's right. But when he come to the Roman, the astronaut, he said, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. Just say the word, Lord. <laughs> and he's already said it. That's it. Now let's raise our hope. Our hearts to God. Let's raise our hands to God. Our hearts to God. For whatever you have need of, salvation, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, divine healing, whatever it is, hold your hands up and hold your heart right in the presence of God and realize that you're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and you are an astronaut of that faith. What? Here comes the count. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Oh, Jesus. Come now. We're placing the power of His name. And as we seen last night, Paul smote a man blind and let another run over him. And we see that Jesus could do whatever He, he did, all kinds of miracles, and yet was right at the end of his road, seeing he was beat down and spit on and everything else. The people don't understand it. They realize that God does it to confirm that it's right and then test the people's faith. Lord, we have stood here and seen total blind receive their sight. Sickness, cancers that was shed of people healed. We have seen those who were dead and laid out for hours after hours and come back to life again. We know that it it's our great Christ to which we are an astronaut in His body. Amen. And now the countdown is on and we're going to believe this morning for our healing, Amen. for our salvation, and for everything that we have need of because when we asked it in the name of Jesus Christ, He promised, ask my Father anything in my name, I'll do it. And that's all we need to do now is call His name and it's got to be done. We're listening to the countdown. Lord, some of them have been sinners, raised up their hands. They're waiting for the countdown. When there will come a change in their heart, that will take all the old vile corruption out. There's many smoke cigarettes. It's ready to lay them down. Many have done things that they ought not have done. And they're ready to lay it down because we ask God Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ to take away everything that's hindering the church this morning from sickness to sin. And let this church be free in the name of Jesus Christ. May the power and the power of the great gospel, the Holy Ghost fire begin to scatter and the great astronauts of God take off to the desire of their heart today. And it, Almighty God, they are yours. And may they receive their healing, their salvation, and whatever they have need of. I command them to you and commit them to you with my prayer on the altar where the blood of Jesus Christ lays fresh this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, may they receive what they've asked for. And the people said, Amen. Amen. So believe it. So be it. I believe it.
I believe. Amen. Amen. I know that He's God. Amen. I know that we're ready for God's great achievement. Amen. What is His achievement to leave the earth? Amen. Amen. The astronaut goes to the moon, another earth. Yeah. And God's church, from airplane, from horseback, and so forth, is leaving as an astronaut to another world, which is heaven. Amen. The countdown is on. Amen. Amen. Uh, you love Him? Amen. Then let's raise your hands and say, Amen. Ah.